I'm going to show you guys what the ideal single family rental property should look like. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search Analysis Show. I'm Holton, ah, no, I'm not Holton Wise, I'm James Wise, and Holton Wise TV is what you're watching, okay? And what I am doing right now, I am fresh off of filming a, another video for Jason from Idaho. Jason, I told you I was going to do three for you today. This is the second one. And I told you this was going to be a, a single family home that's going to be a great representation of, of what I want single family homes to look like. And when I say I want, I, I guess I mean what the tenant base wants, right? Because what I think the property should look like is irrelevant. I'm not going to rent the properties. What you think the property should look like is irrelevant because you're not going to rent the properties. We want our properties to look like what the, the, the most people in the general public in our target customer base want them to look like. So when we renovate these homes, we use fixtures and colors based upon a multitude of things. The two most important things being customer demand, number one. Number two being like cost durability, right? That that nice mixture of like what's cost effective but also durable will hold up, right, to the type of wear and tear that our customer base is going to give us, right? And this particular property, this is this is perfect. This is a great example of what you want these things to look like. 10, 831, Mount View, Garfield Heights, another Garfield Heights one for you. Two weeks on the market, right? This is another, you know, B class, right? You want low risk B class investments, and that's what I'm bringing to you, okay? So this property, it's already been renovated. Well, the interior has been renovated. Just so you know, the roof looks like it's seen better days, okay? You see we got some patching on the roof. So do not anticipate if you buy this home that you're not... Uh, that you're getting a brand new roof, right? Probably in the next five to seven years, you're going to want to spend about five G's replacing this roof, okay? Factor that in already. But as far as the inside goes, this is what our customer base wants, right? You got the, the gray walls, the white trim. Here they did a nice vinyl lower flooring, right? Maybe the existing hardwoods were so messed up that this made the most sense for them to do that, right? You go into the kitchen, they got this open concept. Like at one point there was probably a wall right here and they went and removed that. Now I'm not saying that we need to go into all of our rentals guys and, and make tear out walls and make them more open concept. We don't have to do that. They kind of went above and beyond here, but just the general look, right? This is the modern look that we want, but it is a cool bonus that they ripped out that wall already. Okay. Bathroom, super modern. This is like what your tenants want to see. Okay. This is the stuff that we want. And you got these hardwoods all up for upstairs here, which is so much better than having carpet because when these tenants move out, man, we're not going to really need to do anything to that floor. And uh, down here in the basement, actually, this is another like above and beyond uh, thing that they did. This is pretty sweet. They sprayed uh, the unfinished basement ceiling black. That's actually pretty badass. Like I'm actually building a, a personal home right now, right? It's, you know, not in this price range, right? It's a, it's a large estate. It's on third acres uh, okay outside of Cleveland and I'm actually designing my my basement around this type of theme like I'm gonna have a very similar looking basement ceiling so it's not about me right it's not about what I like so I said that at the top of the show but just coincidentally I think that was a cool touch that they did they added that in there I haven't really seen that in any of the rentals that we've ever done I think this would probably be the first rental that we have done that I've, I've seen that black ceiling. Okay, so that's the look though, right? That's the look that's in. That's what people want. And because of that, they got a premium here, right? As far as the rent goes, they're bringing in 1100 13200 a year. But they're actually bringing in more than 1100 I want to bring your attention to the water sewer bill. Now, as you'll notice from every video that I've given you thus far, including the one I filmed for you earlier today, which I'm sure you probably just got done watching, we always charge, uh, we always, you know, put a line item here for water and sewer, $75 a month or 
uh, the total yearly cost would be 900 right? Here I got 00, zero with an asterisk. And what that asterisk means is they're charging the tenant. The tenant's paying their own water and sewer bill, right? So we do not, as a property management company, let that happen because it's totally inefficient. Are you a lender? If so, Holton Wise is looking to partner with you. If you're licensed in all 50 states, go to HoltonWise.com. Click the digital media tab to advertise on Holton Wise TV today. If you go to HoltonWise.com and you click the property management fact, I have a whole huge write-up dedicated to why it doesn't make sense for you to have the tenants pay their own water and sewer bills, okay? It has to do with the, the legalities of landlord-tenant law in Ohio, plus how the uh, water runs with the land and how the division of water works, okay? Divi Cleveland division of water works, okay? All those things make like a perfect storm where it's like impossible to effectively let the tenant pay it on their own. You get mom and pop landlords that don't know what they're doing that think they can do it, but it doesn't really work, and that explains why. So, so when you're actually looking at this to do an apples to apples comparison, it's actually not an eleven hundred dollar a month rent. It would be an eleven seventy five rent because when Holton Wise takes it over, what we would do is we would change the rent to eleven seventy five and then you would start paying that water sewer bill. We wouldn't have the tenant pay that bill anymore, right? So five thousand six hundred eighty eight is what it would net out to as far as your average uh, annualized expected performance. As far as price goes, I think they're right on the money. They listed it at 80. I think you got to give them what they want. I think this one's going to move. I think there's probably going to be multiple offers on this, right? So we're going to go 80,000, ask for a clear POS, right? We want to make sure we get a clear POS on this one, which shouldn't be an issue, especially at the price we're paying and the fact they already renovated it should be no problem. By the way, Jason, if you don't know what a POS is or anybody else who's watching, in the show notes below, I got a video dedicated to what the POS is. If you guys are going to invest in the Cleveland market, you got to familiarize yourself with that POS, right? So 80K. No problem us paying that. That'd be a 7.1 cap. You put down 20, bank loans you 60. After everything's all said and done, you got yourself another low-risk single-family home in the portfolio, kicking off a 13 and a third percent ROI. This would be another solid notch in the belt. And what I'm going to do for you right now, brother, is I'm going to give you a third video today right now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.